Welcome to the super speedy version of the one and a half hour stream I did for Hobby Shop Sandra over on their private group. I unfortunately had internet issues so I had to do it in two batches and thought I would do a super speedy version here for you so that you could see how I made it all in one place with a quick explanation. Here you have been seeing me prepare everything and I have some resin pieces, stencil stamps and now I'm using aquacolor. I like to use aquacolor as a background because you can layer it beautifully and it is liquid and blends beautifully and also is permanent when it is dry. So I have an original example which I'm almost recreating in a similar manner but just using different colors and um, different combinations. Here I'm tipping off the excess and then drying it. You can leave it to dry naturally or use a heat gun as I am doing here. And while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going to prepare my pieces. You can of course use primer. I have not used primer on these pieces. I'm going straight in with Allegro. Everything will be listed below if you are looking for the colors that I've used and the products. They will be in the description box below this video. You will find if you don't use primer and even if you do use primer that you will probably need at least two coats of the Allegro paint. It dries matte when it is fully dry. It is shiny when it's still wet so it's very easy to see if your project is wet or dry and ready for the second coat. So I have covered everything with one coat, giving it a quick blast with my heat gun and then giving everything a second coat. You can see how much darker it goes once you add the second coat of Allegro paint. And again, it doesn't take very long to dry, even the second coat. And while that is drying, I'm going to do the stenciling. And I stencil onto three different sheets of paper, which you can either get from the Lady Vagabond paper pad, the 12 by 12 sheet, or you can get the individual stock, which is what I am using here. I have a low tack tape, which I buy from the hardware store or the art shop, which is designed not to damage paper. It is specifically for paper, and that's what I've used here. I'm using a permanent ink pad together with a very soft makeup brush to work with the stencil. Even though the stencil is so thin, you can of course use it for thicker pastes and so on. Now, once having stenciled my design, I am filling in the details that I want with color using the paint. And now using the Tarantica Silver, I'm painting in the locks and latches, but of course it is deleting the detail, which I will bring back in a few minutes with my stencil. You will notice that I used the tape to create a hinge on the left hand side so that I could just flip it back into place now when everything was dry and ink again over the top. Even though it doesn't look like you have inked over the Tarantica, as you can see when I'm flipping it up, it is quite obvious. And to add highlights, I'm just using the Tarantica through the stencil at the top. I worked out that my suitcase was nine centimeters. So I'm giving myself a guideline with the masking tape on the left and just using a part of the stencil at the bottom to mimic the base of the suitcase and masking the base which is of course more difficult now to flip and my masking tape came loose so I had to just flip it manually. This time I'm using my tape on the right hand side and doing the base of my suitcase seeing as I still had it marked, masked before I carry on and take off the masking tape and turn the suitcase around, also measuring the eight centimeters, nine centimeters, so that I have my suitcase the same size. 
and it's exactly the same process again. I did protect my paper above my stencils so that I didn't damage extra paper so that I can use more for another project. I mean, it is scrapbooking paper and we do use the scraps. That's where the name comes from, I guess. So the same process, just this time using gold Tarantica, the same shadow earth color for the brown and repeating the black permanent ink on top and the Tarantica on the little bratty bits. Now I wanted to save my airship so I very carefully worked on the other side of my paper and um, for this one I'm using the stenciled handle. I'm not actually using the suitcase um, strap from the mold but then I realized oops I'm supposed to have covered the latches because this time around I'm using the molded straps with the buckles so I don't need the latches in place so I had to turn my paper around and do it again same process with the brown and for the handle this time though I am painting in the handle and you could add a slightly lighter color paint on the top of the handle to give it shadows but I am a highlight rather I'm using the Tarantica and then putting the shading back on top measuring how long my straps are giving myself a masking tape base and a guideline before I again turn my stencil upside down remask off all the bits that I don't want to print and do exactly the same at the bottom it's a little bit fiddly but it is worth it in the end I noticed that while I still had some paint out there were a few bits on my straps and luggage handles that I had missed while I was um, painting them so while I still had some paint left decided to reuse that and I've put everything on one side now that my base is dry I am looking at what I'm going to use for the tag this time round and I did it in the gold Tarantica on the one side of the book paper scrap that I had and now I'm doing it in the black unfortunately I bent my stencil so on the black so I opted to use the gold one instead I had two choices that was just lucky and now I'm using Antoine's stencil with the Tarantica around the outside of my canvas I don't need to go too far in because of course I'm going to have the suitcases taking up the middle so you don't need to waste um, time and energy on printing where it's not going to be seen just make sure that you come in far enough so that when you do put your suitcases down that they um, have something sticking out from underneath them now it's time to cut everything out and oh I wish I could cut at the speed in real life I hate fussy cutting even though these are as simple as could be so that's all three suitcases snippety snappity cut out and now I'm using some packaging um, some nice cardboard that came with some or other delivery underneath my middle suitcase so that I can raise it up I also just like to ink the edges it helps to add a bit of dimension and vintageness and I'm adding the same ink to underneath my suitcases just in case you can see it um, to give it a shadow and I want them to look slightly higgledy-piggledy so I'm sticking the top one to the right the middle one to the left and the bottom one again to the right then I am going to use the flat handle at the top and what I mean by flat is um, when you see me gluing the bottom one you'll notice that I had bent it around some round object there we go you can see the bend while it was drying thank you to Sandra for inviting me to do this live and due to internet issues here are the finished projects bye